Elden Ring mods have come a long way since launch. You have huge overhauls like the Convergence and Reforged, enemy and item randomizers. Heck, there's a mod that lets you play the entire game with your non-existent friends. But have you ever wondered what the bottom of the barrel mods are? The small ones that don't get the same attention as the highbrow, top of the line mods. Well, there's a solution for the two people who actually care enough. The random button on Nexus. This can cure a chronic case of boredom any day. You'll either find a hidden gem or the most worthless piece of crap waste your time mod to exist. But that's why I'm here. I love random stuff. It keeps me on my toes while I get up there in my old, old age. Anyway, I clicked random and got an absolutely baller list. I won't spoil it because that ruins the fun, so stick around with me. Grab a nice big pot of Estes soup and a blanket. Also subscribe because it helps my channel a lot. And hey, without further ado, let's get into the mods. Elden Vins is a mod I wasn't expecting a whole lot from. I thought it was just going to be some tweaks to spells, but no. This dude woke up and decided to change every single spell and incantation. It also added in a Sheen's Gun, Sekiro Blocks, and some Naruto looking movement. Before we get into this, you need to know that this mod is in very early beta, so any bugs or weird things are probably going to be worked out later. I checked out the incantations first, and my god are some of these overpowered. The lightning ones were my favorite, for obvious reasons. The Lanisax Glaive came with a cool new spin. I thought the Fortisax Spear was unchanged for a second, but I realized I was wrong after I saw this huge jump. The Discus of Light Fire is really fast, and I can move while doing them, so I guess I'm just better. This is the main gist of the incantations. A lot of them have new casting animations and allow you to move while doing them. The spells are similar, but there were a couple ones that stuck out, like you when you decided to go outside. The Glint Blade Phalanx is red now and deals some bleed damage, so I guess people can abuse this even more in PvP. Shatter Earth was kinda buggy, and I had a really hard time hitting an enemy for some reason, but it's a good proof of concept. And the Rock Blaster hits midair for some reason, so that was weird. Again, the rest of the spells changed the cast animations and maybe added the projectile. But wait, that's not the end. Remember when I mentioned a Sheen's gun? Well, it basically behaves exactly like it. You do the thing where you hold it up for a second and fire a bunch of rounds, so it's pretty cool. Pairing it with explosive bullets makes it even better because it absolutely blows the dude away. The Sekiro deflection mechanic is pretty cool too, though I'll say it is much easier to actually do it now. I'm literally Sekiro. The last thing this mod adds is a pretty cool new moveset for daggers. I don't even know how to describe this, just watch. Overall, this mod is really cool, and for a very early version, I think this shows some great potential. Keep up the good work, Maku. Okay, so mods 2, 3, and 4 were all armor, so I'll just be combining them into one section so we don't keep getting these throughout the video. The first set we have here is the Penetrator armor from Demon Souls. This isn't the PS5 armor, so it doesn't look as clean, but dang, it still looks good. You have all the little details there, which makes sense because it's a direct rip from the PS3 game. It also comes with a model for the sword, which, when you apply blood grease to it, mimics the actual boss, so that's really cool. Armor set number 2 is the Maiden in Black armor from Demon Souls. Instead of being just an armor though, this is actually a full model swap, so you can literally play as the Maiden herself, dirty feet and all. It is actually kinda cool playing as her, because the character has a really cool design with the wax all over the eyes and the tattered robes. They even decided to add in a weapon, though it just replaces the torch spear, so I'm not touching that. Armor set 3 was our good pal Master Chief, and yes, the model is ported from Fortnite, which is icky, but it still looks drop dead awesome. This makes me want to add Halo guns to the game, like Inferno Plus did with Dark Souls. Maybe he'll make the mod later. Please do. This armor may not have guns, but it does come with an energy sword, so they do leave us with something. Uh, uh, uh. McKenyu's mod pack basically combines six new weapon movesets into one mod, so it's much easier to install. My little monkey brain likes that. Moving on to the first weapon here, we have the Black Mortal Blade, which is just a glorified version of a Sheen Sword, but it's still full power. Look at that sweet combo. Ooh, ah. Some other notable things this adds are an epic basic R1 combo that literally just keeps going, a huge fire stomp, and the airstrike thing. I don't know what it's called. The two-handed version just completely changes everything. The animation where you summon the glaive is nearly identical to a Sheen's, and it looks so awesome. 
You get to run really fast like those Rotomatic edits, there's another over the top combo, and the actual Black Mortal Blade attack. It looks really cool. Our next weapon is the Rekar Yugen. Its basic form reminds me of the Black Mortal Blade a lot, just with some different Sekiro moves. However, when you use the Ash of War, it actually adds a second katana with fire powers. I really like the jump attack when you do that because it looks straight up breathtaking. I mean, who needs DLC when you have this, you know what I'm saying? There's not a lot else to talk about with this weapon, so let's continue this journey with my favorite weapon from Bloodborne, the Rakuyo. Somehow, this crazy person ported the whole moveset, transformations and all. One thing I really liked about this was the blood effect coming from the swords when you attack, because blood stuff and weapons look really good together, like me and my dad. Go check us out at School in the Classics, link to the description in bio. That definitely wasn't just the smoothest plug you've ever heard. Anyway, the Ash of War adds even more blood to the swords, and a glowing effect to the eyes, so I'm in more bliss than a guy who just tried Liza P for the first time. Overall, it adds flashy combos and epic moves, so I vibe with it. Next up on this dinner plate of a mod is the Malachus Blackblade moveset rework. Not too much to really talk about here, some faster attacks, an automatic buff to your weapon, and this cool looking attack at the end of your combo. It's definitely awesome, but I like the completely new weapons better, like the Glaive of Rupture. I mean, this dude's absolutely jacked. Look at him comboing this giant spear with ease. What an absolute chad. The two-handed moveset just gets better. Look at his lightning fast moves. Still though, it looks pretty generic, right? Well, just wait until you see this. We get the full camera zoom out there, so it looks pretty epic. It also buffs your weapon with holy, so it's even better. I like this weapon. I'd play through the game with it. Maybe on stream. Our final weapon here, the cherry on top, is this bow. Again, a weapon that plays really simple. Sure, it looks cool, but what's the difference? Well, when you use the Ash of War, your dude gets frenzied up. There's a huge phoenix launch thing, you get frenzy arrows, it's awesome. This weapon's unique. I expect you to go check it out, spread the word or something, I don't know. Jeez, I spent way too long on this section. Moving on. I present to you, the Wonder Ring, Elden Ring's most glorious mod. This is a complete overhaul to the game and its models. There were a lot of new starting classes, but I had to pick Luigi because he's my bro, and I don't leave a bro behind. I picked up the flask of rabbit blue ribbons, now we can heal up and beat them bosses. Looking at my boy Varey though, he's got the new Sora Drip, mad respect for clipping his eyes through. Tree Sentinel now looks like something out of Skyrim, and I'm a little disappointed it wasn't Trek or something. I didn't make the mod though, so I can't be judging. Luigi fought pretty valiantly in his fight, but it ended in his ultimate defeat. Better luck next time, I guess. I spotted a rogue Harley Quinn in the distance and decided to go on a little killing spree. Melina was changed to the Maiden in Black, so that was actually kind of epic. She gave me the spectral donkey whistle, so now I'm one step closer to becoming Shrek. I decided I should make my way up to Stormville, but then Drax fell on me. We all know Drax is a mighty space alien, so I wasn't about to fight that. When I got closer to Margit though, some wild Rayloffs appeared, but they never asked me if I was awake. It's a really sad day. After a while we made it to Kronk, the wrong lever's boss arena. Rajir just straight up carried me with what looks like a new spell, so I don't know. The Maiden in Black brought me to the round table hold and I got to meet my idol, Master Chief. He's been getting older, but his glory still exists. After that I headed back to Stormvale and found the Link armor, so now we've got better drip than Varey. When I tried to go through the gates, I got assaulted and Alt F forward. That was my wondering experience. It was a fun mod, and I'm sure there was a lot more to find. I just don't have the time to play through all of Elden Ring again. Lockdown may be over, but we can live it all again with this mod. It starts out with a new title screen, so that's how you know it's going to be pretty good. I created my character, Bill Johnson, and hopped into the game. When I loaded in though, I found out that my character ran 25% slower. I don't think I'll be lasting much longer before I quit. I started to run outside, but blacked out. Luckily I came to a few moments later and made my way over to Grafted Sion. He was a faster speed than me, so I didn't even stand a chance. After I respawned and ran up a little bit, my guy went into a wheezing fit and sat on the ground for a couple seconds. Bill is a trooper though, so he made it outside, but blacked out, losing a lot of time. Luckily for him, there was a grace nearby, so he got to take a well-deserved rest. Getting up was quite the challenge, and I can speak from experience because I just recently had pneumonia. This is exactly how it feels. I remember sitting in three blankets and telling my ceiling how cold I was. Good times. That's pretty much what this mod does. Make the game incredibly annoying. <laughs> Celestial Overhaul is a mod from one of my favorite YouTubers, Yagaimi Dark. Show that guy's channel some love, it's actually so underrated. 
Anyway, this mod makes a crap ton of changes to weapons and Ashes of War. I can make a whole video about all the new stuff, so I'll just show off my favorites. The black knife is cool because it adds this awesome slice thing at the end of the special attack. There's also this trail behind the knife, and it looks very similar to the gold tracer from Dark Souls. The Rivers of Blood looks like an anime weapon with that moveset, and it's only amplified by the Ash of War because it causes a bleed to everyone in the vicinity. I mean, it's just absolutely broken. Moving on to the Meteoric Ore Blade, we got this drop dead gorgeous looking effect when you swing it. The Ash of War is a big slice thing that comes with a huge meteor explosion. Mad cool. Like I said, there's a lot more weapons with stuff like this, but I'm not going to cram it into this video. That's not the end of the mod though. It also overhauls the Melania and Moog fights. I'll start off first with Moog. His fight gains a lot of black flame attacks and his knee heal does a lot more damage than I remember. From what I can tell, that's all that's there for right now, but I'm also an idiot so I probably missed a crap ton of stuff. I did notice a lot more with Melania's fight, mainly the absence of her waterfowl dance. All of her attacks also had a bleed effect coming off of them which looked epic. Phase 2 is where the fight really kicks in though, because she makes the whole arena bloody and it sets a really cool atmosphere. She keeps the blood stuff and it just feels a lot more tense, except for the fact that my rivers of blood ripped her to shreds. Probably shouldn't have mod menu my way to level 713. Oh well. Well that's that, 8 random mods. I hope you enjoyed this because I could have been on that Liza P grind. I love you guys though, so I'd never let you down. My viewer retention is probably dying at this point, but I have a couple things to say. First off, we're almost at 1,000 subscribers, and remember, I'm gonna have my mom play Demon Souls on stream when we get there, it'll be pretty fun. Also, my If EA Made Elden Ring video got 150,000 views, which is just wild. Thanks for all the support on that. Alright, I've kept you long enough. Make sure to go check out the mods in the description, and I'll catch you later.